When Etienne Lerich started his own winery in the mid-1990s, his focus, his only focus, his main his obsession was Cabernet Sauvignon. And at the time when all wineries decided to go for a full range, ranging from Sauvignon Blanc to Petit Verdot, he decided to focus on Cabernet Sauvignon and make the best of it. And very quickly, he became the leader in Cabernet Sauvignon in South Africa. Not that he's the only one, but he's definitely year after year on the top list of the best Cabernet Sauvignon in the country. We are now tasting the Le Riche Cabernet Sauvignon 2019. It's Stellenbosch grapes, the Stellenbosch winery, and it's a family business. It's not only Etienne, it's Christo as well. What's in your glass, Cathy? This is really deep, dark, with that purple and black color that I think should come from a Cabernet Sauvignon. It's really dense and plush in the glass. On the nose, just that little hint of green walnuts and spearmint, and then most definitely loads and loads of cassis and black currant fruit underneath that. And of course, there's just that delicate touch of oak spices as well, because I think the green walnut and the spearmint come from the grape itself or the terroir itself, whereas the oak spicing is there definitely from the barrel maturation. But the color, I think it's, it's I'm surprised how dense the, 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 the color is. You s it's, it's opaque. Uh, it, it still shows a lot of youth, but it's almost, what do you see on the color? Black, some deep magenta hues, okay. and then an exceptional depth and density. Now, depth and density, clearly, it's a wine you cannot see through. I mean. It's opaque. Can completely. you smell through? Can you drink it through? <laughs> Definitely. So on the nose, as I've mentioned before, there's that just that beautiful cassis black currant. It's prevalent with a hint of green walnuts, and it's all seasoned lightly with good French oak. Um, more on the cinnamon nutmeg side than on the vanilla side at oh. all. It's definitely. not an easy wine. It hasn't Def been made easy. No, definitely not. And then on the palate, that fruit which you're expecting is definitely there. But it's kind of reined in and it's well controlled. The fruit doesn't sprawl anywhere. It's not voluptuous or plush or remind you of a big fat sofa that's cushioned with all these fat cushions and throwaways. It's really reined in and given shape and form by big cab tannins. But the, the fruit needs the cab tannins to give it shape and form, and the tannins need the fruit in order just to give the tannins flesh and add a little bit of padding to that frame and structure. Let me be clear on that wine. That's a wine that needs bottle aging. Mm. It's extremely powerful now. I mean, it's not out of balance at all, but it's so promising because the tannins are extremely powerful, but completely in balance. So you know the way the wine will evolve, it will evolve not in order to compensate a youth in balance, but it will just develop into something silky, powerful, gaining palate weight. But now when you will taste it, clearly it's a massive wine. And Again, I, I don't see rusticity, I just see power. Absolutely. I think you've used the phrase um, iron fist in a velvet glove before. And this certainly, it's got that latent power that can only evolve and gain complexity as it stays in the bottle. When you drink this wine, it's youthful because the fruit is just so almost primary but i will but not use latent power it's powerful it's powerful, it's powerful okay. now <laughs> it's not waiting it's not like a spring that is supposed to jump out this is a very powerful wine but the power that comes out with a lot of freshness thanks to the cassis and to the spiciness of the cabernet sauvignon and this hint of mintiness it's it's not exhausting your tongue you still want to drink the next glass it's not like a monster wine that you satiated with uh, or sated. Yes. 
uh, with one glass. You are, you want another glass. It makes your palate salivate. And that's why as a sommelier for food pairing, it makes your client very happy because they want more food and then they want more wine. So <laughs> it's a very good example of uh, Cabernet from Stellenbosch. Correct. Uh, Stellenbosch becoming more and more the place where the best Cabernets of the country are being made. There's great Cabernet outside Stellenbosch, don't hear me wrong. But if you want to compare uh, on a global scale with Napa and the Medoc, Stellenbosch clearly with wines like this one can compare shoulder to shoulder. Absolutely. Great wine. Stellenbosch 2019 Le Riche Cabernet Sauvignon. Power. Latent power. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>